Okay, students, so just one more quick little survey of the setup before we begin. I, I went ahead and did my drawing. You could do yours in white charcoal pastel, because I or I'm sorry, white charcoal pencil, because I know that's what you have. Uh, I decided to use mine in red, simply, well, one, I just like how it looks, but also because uh, my white pencil kept breaking on me. So you could also do it in black. If you have a darker piece of paper, black is fine but white tends to disappear a little more easily. You can see I started in white and those colors are gonna be hidden pretty easily underneath my pastels. So then over here, I have my setup. Remember, you know, block out the excess light, get a nice strong light source. Because again, I can't stress this enough. I know I've said it a hundred times, but with color, color is heck of important, but what is really most important is value. You really want to be able to capture the lightness and darkness of things. So over on my table, I have my little test strip and some pastels laid out that I think will work. Uh, I worked on the color of the pumpkin. You know, the orange that I had in my pastel set was not perfect. So I had to add some yellow to it. I also messed around with trying to make some shadow. So here and some also some shadow areas here. And for that, I ended up using blue. You'll find that black is not a good pigment to use oftentimes. If you add it to your other colors, it'll really make them look dirty. There are some cases where there's no other choice and that it, it, it is the best solution, but most cases, test other solutions. Here's for my zucchini. I played around with some different colors here. And for that really dark green, I actually ended up adding red, which is the complement and that red made that green much deeper for the dark shadows. For the tablecloth, you know, I had some yellow ochre, and then I played around a few colors for maybe cast shadows, but I still need to work on those. And then the most complicated thing, which is the bottle, has a lot of amber colors in it and oranges, and then the black coming through from the, the sheet behind it. I played around with different possibilities, just trying to see. The one thing you can count on is that you're most guaranteed not going to have the perfect color coming straight out of the box, nor should you use that. You know, part of your job as an artist is to really experiment and mix these colors to get really fantastic representations of what you're seeing, you know, come up with good solutions by playing around. The other nice thing about having it on this little test piece of paper here is I can hold it up next to my I noticed that color I made for the orange shadow of the of the pumpkin actually looks really good in that lit up part of the amber of the bottle. So that might be a perfect solution for there. You know, for my zucchini, I can put these colors kind of next to it and see. I know it's going in and out of focus, sorry about that. But you can see that I'm just testing the colors and I'm gonna manipulate them. I'll, I'll put down the middle tones first and then I'm gonna push some lighter and some darker. A lot of this is just experimentation though. Honestly, the best way to learn color is just through practice. And the more you mess around with it, the more you try to get, you know, try your hardest to mix the colors that you see, the better it's gonna look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start by laying down sort of the middle tone. I have this orange. It's I know it's not exactly the right orange, but I'm going to work across the form. There's a lot of ways of applying this stuff. Some people like to blend a lot with their fingers. I recommend kind of avoiding that if you can. Let your mark making come through. Uh, for one reason, it allows a little bit of the color of the paper to come through the, through the drawing. So I'm going to actually fill this up quite a bit with the orange. I'm going between the little bits of detail here. So in other words, you can mix on the page as you go.
Okay, students, so, so far what I've done is I've sort of attempted to put the mid-tones down. Uh, I, I did kind of address a few highlights and, and some dark areas, but for the most part, on the majority of this, I'm really just trying to pay attention to the sort of colors that I'm seeing, you know, whether I'm seeing sort of greens in the shadow, there's a couple little bits of orange glow over here. Um, there's some like little yellow glow in here or the ochre, just just like the ochre of the blanket down here. The, the only thing that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and blend this in a minute, but before, I just wanna say before I do, black is one of those colors, I think I said so before, is one that you really wanna try to avoid using. But like I said, sometimes it's just inevitable. There's just cases where black is necessary. I mean, I have a black sheet behind my bottle and stuff and behind the background. So one way to help it make it look less dirty, like, because sometimes black just mixed with other pigment looks dirty, is to layer it with some other dark colors. So over here, since I have orange, orangish and orangish red, reddish brown, um, I figured a dark cool color, like a blue, would be wise. A dark blue back here is going to help make this really pop. And then when I layer the black over it, it'll still appear black to the naked eye. But, you know, any artist can really kind of sense the fact that there's like a depth to it. And it'll just make it more visually exciting. Over here, I'm kind of starting to lay some purples because it'll complement this yellow color. And I think that'll end up just sort of working to my advantage. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and... You can do it this way if you want. You don't necessarily have to. Some people like to just just only blend with the pastel. In other words, just keep building it up like so until it gets to the level of darkness that you want. However, there is something to be said about blending. Um, again, one other thing that I, I wanna point out too is in the beginning of this, you don't wanna get too caught up in details. A difficult one is this bottle, of course, because there's a lot of reflections and, I mean, I even have the pumpkins kind of reflected in it here. Some light areas. This green, I guess, was from the sheet that was over my window. I mean, you start to see things that you didn't realize until you start drawing it. It's kind of amazing. Anyways, you, you usually try to avoid too much of the really sharp detail. At first, keep it just sort of a general blend of light and darks. And then as you progress, and once those light and darks get to where they want to be, then you can go back in and sharpen up edges with lines or add some like, you know, a really specific reflected light or really specific sort of reflections up in here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just use a paper towel because I don't have a chamois.
Okay class, so that was kind of round two. Um, I still need to work on some of the colors over here in this sort of transparent shadow. And I'm probably gonna keep messing around with these, but I feel like there was a lot of green in it. Um, plus a little bit of yellow. I, You know, really just the more you look, the more you see. The more you look, the more you start realizing there's all these little colors that show up. Now, my advice to you is, um, First of all, be, be careful about getting carried away with the black. Uh, I, I have a tendency too sometimes to accidentally start using too much. And when I do the blending with the uh, paper towel, it tends to get pretty messy. Like it starts to make colors muddy. But my plan is at this point to really start not blending anymore. Uh, maybe I, you know, I might fill up some of this background area or a, you know, these parts that I haven't missed. And I'll just get a, a general, like, you know, medium tone down of the colors that I'm shooting for. But at this point, like, I really want to start kind of avoiding coloring, I'm sorry, uh, blending with a paper towel. Because you, you notice it kind of gets a little bit muddy. It gets a little bit fuzzy. Sometimes the colors start to look uh, just kind of gross. Like, you don't, you don't want that to happen too much. So, like, you just do just enough to get the sort of general colors where they're supposed to be. And then you start working on details. So you notice like on this bottle, I started to lay in some darks where the kind of like darker areas are. Got one little highlight there. I even have the start of a reflection of this pumpkin is being reflected over here. I know there's a little reflection of this cucumber as well over here, which I'm gonna work on a little bit later. Uh, but you can see now like the tones are starting to get more and more into their spot, the values. The lights are lighter, got a little highlight there, and the darks are getting quite dark down there. Maybe a little more green in it. Now one trick I do have suggest to you is if you do end up using a little black, for example, you know, I put a tiny bit here on the bottom of this cucumber, so it doesn't read so dead black, because sometimes black just doesn't work. Um, run a complementary color in there. Like I know this is majority of this cucumber is green. So I just skittered some red into it and it, and it just makes it look better. Same down here on this pumpkin. I think I need to fix that. It's a little bit too black, but I try to run some blue into it and that alleviates the problem a little bit. Back here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of blue in the background going along the side of this orange. And that way, when I do put in a little more black, that blue will be part of the complex color that's going on. But again, you know, try to avoid black as much as you can because it, it, it's really easy to accidentally overdo it and make things muddy. But I don't know, hopefully you can start to see that this, you know, just by paying attention to sort of the reflections that you see, sometimes something as random as like, let's see, that's not the right color, but you know, like a light blue, is reflected in it. Who knows what it is? Could be something from part of your room. Is just happened to be reflecting in that glass and you see it as a light blue. Go ahead and draw it as you see it. And that is gonna make a huge difference in making glass look like glass just by trying to be faithful to the sort of things that you see happening inside of it. Okay. All right, I think I'm gonna take a break and then maybe I'll come back to this if I get a little time. All right, so students, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more time into this. Uh, I won't bore you with a bunch more talking, but just a couple of things. So during my break, you know, it's a, a really good thing to do is to sit back and critically analyze your drawing. Really look at it and ask yourself what things need work what things do you, are you not happy with? What things can you change? And that way, when you go back for your next session, you can really concentrate on some of those things and maybe fix some of that. Another thing I did was I grabbed some smudge sticks. You know, you, you can use these if you want, but one thing that they're nice for doing is you can take and push pigment around a lot more carefully than you can with your fingers. 
you can you can you know push those browns or whatever right up to the edge of that cucumber or whatever you need to do over here anywhere where you have like little areas of detail this can this can help a lot and i typically have at least two one for darks and one for light colors so i'll just go ahead and do the rest of this in um only have about unfortunately oh i'd say about 45 more minutes before I have to start my Zoom meeting. So I'll just see how far I can get in that time. Okay, students, I got to stop because it's about time for the um, Zoom meeting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a, give it a quit at this point. But I think I've taken it far enough that you guys get the idea. A lot of what makes this happen, trial and error, experimentation, and lots of layering. You can erase, so don't be afraid. One thing the, uh, I really recommend, save your highlights for last and use them sparingly. Look for those little areas that just capture the light. This is particularly in the glass, of course. And make them very specific. And that's just the little final touches that kind of give it that last glass look. So a little bit of something over here too. Um, another thing about glass too, just to keep in mind, there's oftentimes a refraction. You notice how my tabletop's heading down at a weird angle. You know, it doesn't meet up over here. That's because of the refraction through the glass. That thing gets bent. Got a little bit of the zucchini coming up over here. Um, I don't know, little highlights as the light goes through the amber glass, kind of makes these weird glows. And just whatever, mainly though, you know, think about this as uh, lots of layers and time. One of the biggest ingredients in this project, I'll be honest, is just gonna be you spending time on it. If you spend a lot of time on it, I think you'll get pretty good results. If you try to do it quickly, because you think it's just something that you're gonna just bust through, it's not gonna turn out nearly as nicely, I don't think. So keep that in mind. Okay. Good enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and let this be and talk to you next week.